Hi, welcome to this quick PowerPoint presentation covering the benefits of signing up to the Practical Parametric Object Making with GDL course that will be running from the 2nd of September. It's a number of lessons that will take you through basic GDL object making. My name's Gary Laws and Eric has asked me to do this not because I'm a GDL expert, because I most certainly am not, but because we have created many, many objects over the last 10 to 15 years that greatly enhance the way we work. So they're very focused, these objects. They're focused on improving our drafting processes. And we feel this is relevant to anyone that uses ARCHICAD. They're not high-flying, fancy objects that do all sorts of clever things, which you can certainly do once you get to understand ARCHICAD. These are grounded, practical objects, hence the title for this presentation. I said the presentation was a PowerPoint presentation. That was a, a, a little bit of a lie. Um, the presentation is going to be done in ARCHICAD uh, because I love ARCHICAD. But I thought because it's about GDL, I would thought I would create a GDL object that is a PowerPoint presentation. So this is it. If I click on the object, I can now switch on the next element, which is the strap line saying, why invest your time in learning GDL? Why? Because it is an investment. And as with all investments, it does take a little bit of money and it takes a little bit of time. But the benefit with any investment is what you get out at the rear end. And this is what I'm going to run through now. What is the first reason? The first reason is learning a GDL will enable you to create objects that don't currently exist in ARCHICAD. Obvious, absolutely obvious. But at the moment, how are you doing that? You're doing that by getting modeling tools in ARCHICAD, modeling up your 3D object, saving it. ARCHICAD cleverly creates a GDL object of, of it. But every time you do that, you're creating another one. So you may have another object that's similar, slightly different. You have to do it all again. It takes time. It's not very efficient. It puts lots of objects on your system that you need to manage. Your 2D views of them are often pretty horrid and inappropriate. And actually sorting out those 2D views isn't always easy. That's the first reason. What's the second reason? to expand the capability of existing ARCHICAD objects. Now, ARCHICAD comes with a great library of many, many objects. And all of us that have used ARCHICAD will know that quite often they don't quite do what we want. They're, they're, they're a little bit constrained. Um, you've, you just want to use them in a different way or put a bit more capability, capability into them. Once you've got your head around GDL, you can do that. You place an object, you think, ah, oh, it doesn't quite go to where I want it to go. Open it up, free it up, make it what you want it to be. I'll show you a bit of that in our second video. Reason number three. Reason number three is to improve the presentation of drawn information. I said at this level that if you create and save a GDL object, it creates in 2D something that often isn't terribly good for your drawing. So you will then often switch that off, put it on a different layer, then draw something in 2D on a separate layer. It's clunky, it's poor, it's no way to drive a model-based system. With creating your own GDL objects, A, you get the 2D drawings you want that are appropriate, but also you can make them as nice as you want, as, as attractive as you want, something that suits the style of your practice. After all, we're all designers. We want our drawings to, to reflect what we do. We want the best possible presentation we can. Get your head around GDL. You can do that. Next reason, reason number four, to enhance your documentation package. So, schedules, building information modeling. This is what it's all about. If you've got a parametric GDL object, it can build itself in 2D and 3D to give you the object you want in 2D and 3D, but also it can be used to drive the information about that object so that as you place it and as you stretch it around, as you, as you modify it, it will carry behind information that will be used in your schedules to give you a better documentation package that you would provide to your client, to the contra contractor, or to the other building professionals in the team. Fifth reason for getting involved with GDL, to inform the design process. Most buildings are an assembly of elements that come from an array of manufacturers and suppliers. 
we as design professionals select those suppliers and manufacturers based on certain criteria. If that information is nested within the object, who the manufacturer is, what product number it is, how that's fit for purpose, where those objects fit, then every time you place an object, it becomes a very simple process of opening up a few choice lists, choosing the object, choosing the manufacturer, choosing the, the object number and so on. It saves you wading out into the internet, trying to find all that information, bringing that back in and then building your own object that fits it. You have preferred suppliers put that information into the object. Again, you'll see that in practice in the video that we've produced showing the sorts of objects that we've created. Just look out for that. And the final reason, and arguably the most important one, is to improve your drafting and documentation speed. Um, we're all here in business. We're all here to try and make a living out of this. Obviously, we get a lot of pleasure out of our work, which is one of the reasons we do it. But the big reason is we actually have to make a living out of this. So the faster we are at drafting, the faster we are at documentation, the more money we make. Um, just to give you a, a flavor of that, I've got a very, very simple little object here. This is, um, this is one we've created. Um, I'll just open up its parameters and show you. This is um, an inspection chamber. So in this instance, it's, it's one that would be used probably on a, on a drainage run. So where foul drains come together, you have an inspection chamber where you can access it for maintenance and clearing purposes and the such like. Um, could also be for any services, but you know, this is a, a traditional existing one. So this is what we would use on a survey of an existing building probably. I've got a, I've got a new one. Yeah, there's a new one there. Um, but this is an existing one. Now, when we survey one of these on site, the way in which we measure it is we'll put the staff on there and measure the cover level of that item. And that information goes in here. So the cover level, cover level in relation to the project datum is entered there. And then we lift the lid and we stick our disto down in there and we measure the distance from the cover level down to the invert level and we put that information in there. Now, if we switch the, the labels back on, you will see this item is labeling itself with the inspection chamber number. Let's say, for argument's sake, it's the second one. Um, it brings in the cover level, which is spot on, but it also works out the invert level, so we don't have to do the sum. Okay, so it, it does all that for us, so it makes it easy. Now, this is us designing a project, a product, a GDL product, based on the way in which we work on site and then bring that information back into the drawing office. So this is streamlining our processes. So there are many objects that we have done in this manner where we've just tweaked it to suit the way we work. In addition, you'll see there's only, well, generally three parameters, well, four parameters that you fill in here. There isn't millions of parameters. You look at any other Graphisoft object and there's pages of parameters to fill in that you have to wade through to get to the important ones. Now, if we go to the full parameter list, they're all there in the background. So if you did want to change any of the any of the others, they're all available to you. But generally, these are the only ones you need. So those are the ones we put into the user interface. So it greatly speeds up the process. We like to have a single page if we can, not always possible. But we like to have a single page as a user interface, but stack the rest of it behind it in the main parameter list in case you ever have to wade in there. Very rarely do. So that's our object. If I place that uh, in our project file, which my PowerPoint presentation obviously is a project file, um, I can rotate it at this point as you normally can. It's constrained by its sizes, so it's not a stretchy object, this one, because I don't want it to be stretchy. I want it to fit the sizes I've given it. I've rotated it, but you'll see the text stays where it is. So there's, a, there's an element of intelligence in there. If I select the object and go back to its parameters, I want the text to be left aligned say OK, and actually I want it down there. And again, we've got a hotspot that enables us to put the text wherever we like. So that's a cute little object. It draws exactly what I want to see in 2D. Actually, if I open it up in 3D, you'll see it's just a simple, where are you? It's just a simple block. So the height, so the cover level is right. There's no cover. I don't need access detail. It's just a block. And this point here is the invert level. So if I was running services to it, I know where to snap to to make the levels of those correct. So simple object. I don't need any more than that in 3D. It would just create too many faces. That's it. Now, speed. Before we came on air and started recording this, I placed one of these, got a colleague to time it. It took 17 seconds from going to the object 
choosing it, open its parameters, fill in those three, four parameters we need, click on screen, place, 17 seconds. I then drew one of these using the standard Archicad tools. I like to think I'm reasonably good with Archicad, so I'm probably as quick as, as most people. It took me one minute, 14 seconds to draw the shape. And that could have been with a polygon tool, the line tool, the fill tool, the slab tool, if you wanted it in 3D, any of those, doesn't matter. It's the same process you're drawing a rectangle. So I drew a rectangle, put a cross into it, drew the text. That took me one minute, 14 seconds, okay? And you might think, well, going from 17 seconds to 1 minute 14, is it worth spending a lot of time and money on learning GDL? That's 4.3 times faster than drawing it longhand. Every single time you have to do it. And not just for that object, but for every other object you, pr you produce going forward. Every single object you go forwards with. Um, if you look at the other video, you'll see many of the other objects we've created. And once you start on this process, it becomes quite an exciting process of just seeing how slick you can make your objects. If you're in a reasonable size practice where you've got one person driving the GDL object creation and everyone else benefiting from it, you can have a very interesting and very efficient system. One person creating GDL objects, 10 people say using them, you can suddenly get massive productivity gains from just thinking about your objects. In addition to that, this object will work forever. So I may save one minute today, but I also save one minute tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the day after until I retire. That saving from this investment lasts forever. One little course starting on the 2nd of September although if you don't make it on the 2nd as long as you've signed up for it you'll be able to access the videos for for as long as they're online you'll be able to download them for yourself you will be able to do this we will come away with this object we will create this one as we go on and a few others as well um, it's a relatively small investment but the benefit goes on forever I really hope you sign up. I'd love to speak to you again on the 2nd of September. Have a go. Thank you very much for your time.